Hello, I'm Beth. Welcome to this yoga class on finding a stable and comfortable posture. So in the Yoga Sutra, one of the classical texts on yoga, Sutra 2.46 says asana, which is our physical practice of yoga, should be stable and comfortable. So we're going to look for that today in our standing posture, basically in our mountain pose, but really how we stand every day, we're going to look for a stable, comfortable posture. You will need a strap for this practice. If you have something with a little weight on the end, it will be helpful, but it's not necessary. You can have a long scarf or a dog leash, whatever you have lying around. You'll also need to be set up near a wall. To begin this practice, we're going to do kind of a posture check-in. I'm going to turn sideways. You can place your feet parallel at about the distance you'd like for your mountain pose. So maybe about hip width, maybe a little closer, further together. So notice how you stand naturally. And a few things that happen, either how we stand naturally or when we try to correct for our posture, is our thighs tend to come forward, our lower ribs, our chest tend to come up. And then our head is kind of contracted either in the front or in the back. Our neck is not in a great position. So we're going to look at those three areas. And we'll do this using the strap. The strap is going to fall from your shoulder. I might have to adjust mine a few times. But right down the side of your body, sort of where an epaulette would be on your shoulders, all the way down. You can have it go all the way down to the ankle. I'm going to keep mine here. And then I also have a little bit of a line on the side of my pants, which should help us see this line. So the first thing is... We kind of tend to hang forward in our thighs and you can see how that makes my pants come to the front of the strap. So the sides of my legs, if there was a long stripe on the sides of my legs, is not even or parallel to my ankle, running through my ankle. So I want to send my thighs back. You're actually backing up with your bottom a little bit. So sending your whole bottom back. So the weight comes a little bit more over your heels. And now you can see that that's more lined up. And then the next thing we do is when we get that lined up, sometimes then we tend to thrust our chest out forward. We tend to unnaturally arch our, our low back, which also will bring our thighs and pelvis forward. So keeping this part backed up, you can, I'm going to move this strap. We don't need it right now to place the hands on your rib cage right underneath your chest and encourage that area to soften. So your collarbones can stay wide. Your chest can stay rising a little bit without having to go into this kind of soldier, really bring your shoulders back, scrunch your shoulder blades together on the back. So soften the ribs. Your shoulder blades or your will naturally be wide. So they'll come a little onto your back, but again, not that super pulled back. And you can take your elbows back and feel how that feels versus just a natural shoulder blade setback. Arms set into your whole short shoulder girdle, hands hanging by your side from your fingers right down through your ankle bone. And then the last thing is once we have those things, sometimes our neck is forward or we tend to jut it back too much, you're looking for your ears to be over your shoulders. And when you lift your neck up, we're gonna try not to do it just kind of like it's on a little hinge. Instead, lift at the back of your neck, extending your cervical spine, that's your neck, long to the ceiling, and have length as you lift your head. So that's the type of posture that we're going for, a nice mountain pose. And now we're going to practice some things that will help us get there or help us stay there. We're going to do some strengthening work, some stretching work, some body awareness work. So the first thing, you will need the strap again, but you don't need it yet, is we're going to do snow angels. And just like you did maybe as a child, you can stand in your pose, hands out. And so the sides of my arms still line up with the sides of my body. And then just lift your arms all the way up and overhead and then back down. And you can do this a few times. So the first key in doing this is that we don't shift everything out of that alignment that we just got in. So when you lift your arms overhead, you don't want to borrow the move from your back and thrust out your ribs, press your legs forward. Instead, you want everything lower body, the torso, really everything in your body to stay pretty still as you move your arms up and down.
And then the next thing to notice is the movement of your scapula, your shoulder blades on your back. Notice how when you lift your arms, your scapula widen out to the side. That's a good movement. We want that movement to happen, the widening of our scapula. And then they widen and lift. But if they don't widen, that's where that lifting of the shoulders gets uncomfortable and can feel really scrunchy on our neck. So practice that a few times, lifting, widening your shoulder blades, feeling them really wide here and staying wide as they start to lift up. See if that gives you more of a sense of freedom of movement as you lift your arms overhead. And you can absolutely keep your arms bent while doing this. If that bothers your shoulders in any way, you can still practice that same movement. All right. Now we'll use the strap again and we'll stretch our shoulders a little bit more. Definitely it is our shoulders that tend to get tight in posture. We do a lot these days where we're kind of hunched over, our shoulders are internally rotated. We're gonna do a few moves to feel really open across the collarbones and be able to maintain that openness without rolling forward and also without having to overcorrect that by really drawing the shoulder blades back. So we'll take our strap, take your strap wide, I'll stay sideways, Palms down, give yourself a lot of width to the strap. And just like we did the side to side movement, we're gonna take an overhead movement here. And again, don't let the back take over, don't let the legs take over. Keep everything in the position that we already did. As you lift your strap up and overhead, you can definitely give yourself more strap here. Pull your shoulder blades, keep them wide as they come a little bit together on your back, but you wanna keep that width and then back up and overhead. And same thing as we did in side to side, you can have your arms bent when you do this. Thinking about using the elbows wide to help keep the shoulder blades wide. And maybe just come back to here if your arms are bent. And let's do one more time. Give yourself more strap if you need it so that you don't have to use your body to compensate as you come all the way overhead. And then stay overhead. We're gonna start with the palms away from us on the strap. I'll face you. So see how when the palms are away from you, that is going to roll your shoulder blades a little bit forward again. Keep your shoulder blades wide on your back. And then with that width, start to roll both arms externally so that your palms face forward. Now your shoulder blades will come closer on the back. You really wanna keep them wide. In fact, lift the belt a little bit away from your body and you can feel that width. I'll turn around to show you that same thing. So from here, arms are apart, palms face you. And then I externally rotate my arms and I can even lift my shoulder blades, but I'm not lifting them in, I'm lifting them away so that they stay nice and wide. Now for me, you can drop the strap. That feels much better on my shoulders than if I try to interlace my hands. Because look what happens when I interlace. All of a sudden my shoulders start rolling forward again. So it takes a lot more effort for me to keep the arms in the shoulder girdle, keep them back without using the strap, without having a nice wide arm. So next we're going to do a little bit of opening for the shoulder at the wall. This is sometimes called a clock stretch. You'll step over so that you face the wall sideways, maybe about a foot from the wall. Bend the arm closest to the wall. Place the forearm on the wall so that your elbow is maybe a little bit underneath the shoulder and your arm is maybe a little bit behind your torso. Now this is a very adjustable pose. You might step forward a little bit more. You might step back, arm a little higher or lower. That's to find your area of stretch that doesn't go into any area of pain. Once you have your hand there, your forearm there, you're gonna start walking the feet, revolving them away from the wall slowly so that you can feel what sensation's going on. I move my feet away, keep my shoulder back. Behind my rear delt, I'm starting to feel some action there. Now this feels like a good place for me to stay. I feel a lot of work going on. Once you find your place, You'll stay and breathe there for a few breaths. 
you can stay longer if this is feeling like a really good stretch. You're feeling that buildup of sensation without moving into painful discomfort. And then release and we'll flip around and do the other side. So I'll turn around so you can see the other side. Forearm on the wall, feet face front to start. Adjust, this side might feel different. We're looking to have our torso facing front first. And then we start walking our feet. Going to whatever degree that you feel a comfortable little sort of tug, a comfortable amount of stretch on this side. And once you find that, you breathe here for a few breaths. And then release. All right, we'll do, I think, two more things at the wall for a little bit of stretch and also a little bit of strengthening work. So the first is our downward facing dog at the wall. Turn to face the wall. You know that when you do downward dog, when you place your hands on the floor, your hands come a little bit in front of your shoulders. So that means we'll take them a little bit higher on the wall. Spread your fingers nice and wide. Press evenly down into your hands and press so that your arms can lengthen away from the wall. Then start to step back and you'll hinge at your hip crease. So you'll create that kind of uh, diamond shape in your body or triangle shape in your body. Letting your head come between your arms, your ears between your biceps. You might need to walk your feet back a little further. Now here's where, when we're in down dog, there's a real tendency to let everything just sort of hang, to hang between our arms. Notice how my chest is going to the floor, my back is arching, my rib cage is going down. So I'm gonna send my bottom back, put more weight on my heels, push into my hands, and then soften my ribs toward my spine to lengthen my back. Everything in the core kind of draws in to center. So not super pushed in, but it's all engaged so that I can have a nice long dog. And the last thing you can feel as if the outer parts of your arms sort of rotate toward the floor. So an external rotation, there might not be much movement in there. You can play around with that. Nice, and then step back into the wall. Our last pose at the wall is going to be a wall plank pose. If you are someone like me, who is not a fan of plank, plank at the wall can be a great way to practice. It's less pressure on your arms and your wrists. You really will still get the shape of the pose. And in addition, you'll get plenty of core work, plenty of strengthening of your core. So again, step to face the wall. This time, hands come about the same height as the shoulders. If we were in plank, the hands are directly under the shoulders. They're still about shoulder width apart. Hands, fingers are placed nice and wide. And then we step the legs back, but this time we don't hinge from the hip crease. We keep the entire torso, legs in one line. Stepping back only to the degree that you can maintain all of those posture points. So where you don't release your legs forward, your ribs forward, you keep your, keeping that same line. My ears are still in a diagonal all the way down to my ankles, even though I'm in this leaned over shape. I'm gonna lean over even a little bit more. And once you find the version that works for you, you can hold for a few breaths or longer with less pressure on the hands and wrists Sometimes it's easier to do longer holds here. All right, and then walk back in toward the wall. The last thing that we're going to do is to work on a little bit of strength in chair pose. Now chair pose is a great pose for building strength in the legs, but it will also help us build strength in the core and as we move our arms into different positions, we can get used to building a strong posture with our arms in different places. So start with your feet in mountain pose. Again, as wide or close as comfortable for you. I tend to like about hip width. This time there is gonna be that little bit of hinge at the hip creases without coming forward too much. So we're really thinking about sending the bottom back. And you can keep your chair up high. It doesn't have to be a super low chair, whatever feels right to you. We're gonna play around with a few different arm positions. So we're gonna start with the hands right on the hips. 
The nice thing about the hands on the hips is you can gently encourage your weight to go back in that direction. And now I don't want to let my ribs sink forward. So if you'd like, you can place your hands on your ribs, encouraging that softening of the ribs, noticing how our back stays strong, even as my ribs soften. And as my ribs soften, my chest doesn't come down. My chest, my collarbones stay wide with those soft ribs. So you can stay here or you can see if you can maintain this shape with other arm positions. So in addition to hands at the hips, I sometimes like hands at heart center. Placing the palms together and touching the thumbs lightly to the center of the collarbones can help really maintain that feeling of everything strong and yet nice and soft. You can take your hands straight out in front. This kind of acts as a little bit of a counterweight. And you might find that you can send your weight back further on your heels when you do this. And see how that feels. Now anytime you can come up out of this pose, you don't have to hold as long as I'm doing. You certainly will get a lot of leg strength, but you can come up at any time. You can take your arms out into a cactus position and play around with that width across the back of your shoulders, width across the front of your chest. Being careful, again, not to send the chest out. When you do this, there's going to be a real tendency to do that, to overly arch the back. And then finally, you can do any version of taking them up, either taking them out to a T or a half T, if you have a wall here, taking them up to more of a V, taking them up overhead. I keep them overhead in front of my body, not all the way back to my ears, because I find that give you a little sideways view. I find that I don't really have the strength to do that. My shoulders are pretty tight. And so I try to take my arms all the way back so that my shoulders or my biceps are on the outside of my ears. Then I do start to get a curve in my low back. And I can feel the strain of that already. So I tend to practice chair pose either with hands low, heart center, or out in front so I can maintain the posture. All right, so those are all of our poses. Let's go back to that little bit of a posture check. Put your feet at your mountain pose width and see if you can mentally go through those little bit of checks on your own, drawing the thighs back, sending the bottom back, making sure that your shoulders, your hips, your ears over your shoulders all form a line down the side without thrusting your ribs, your chest forward, softening of the ribs weight on the front part of your heels and then just enjoy standing strong here for a few moments noticing that it does take work to be strong in your posture here and yet finding that place that again is steady and strong yet comfortable at the same time that you can maintain this because you found your comfortable center so that's our posture practice for today. I thank you so much for joining me for this. Now, if you want to do a little bit of relaxation after this, I'll link to a practice you can try up here. If you like this, comment below, hit like, tell me what you liked about it, and subscribe to this channel to see more by me. It's always free. Have a great rest of your day.